The beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. We magnify you. We honor you. You are the way. Lord, that young lady that sang, you made a way. Lord God Almighty, she was spot on. That song was a, tes I mean, a testimony of what you did. For me today, you made a way. Because at the point in time, I thought, hmm, would I be able to make it? But Lord, you cleared the way for us. And here we are this afternoon. We've come to say thank you. The one whose name is the way, we thank you. And we thank you because everyone that is under the sound of my voice today, you will make a way for them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, Father, we step aside that you will take over. Amen. We have not come to listen to the voice of man. We want to hear your voice. Spirit of Jesus, speak the counsel of the Father tonight, this evening. And let the name of Jesus alone be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him or her, he will make a way for you. And then you may be seated in his awesome presence. By now, I believe you will be getting used to seeing me sitting down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because if you check the Bible, every time Jesus preached, he was always sitting down. So... I am now copying my master <laughs> unapologetically. Praise the Lord. Hmm, there are sons and there are sons. I thank God for my son and my daughter. I'm very proud of you. And my prayer is that you will not fail. You will not fall. Amen. You will not become an ex-champion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The favor of God will continue to rest upon your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not be small. Amen. I say you will not be small. Amen. You will not be small. Amen. That place that God has earmarked for you. Whether the devil likes it or not, you will get there. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You and your household, Amen. you will get there. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will become unstoppable. Amen. God will take you from glory to glory. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. From victory to victory. Amen. He said they shall gather together, it shall not be by me. Anyone that gather together against you, they shall fall for your sake. Amen. So shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You will not weep over your children. You will not weep over your biological children. You will not weep over your spiritual children. You will not weep over your wife. We will not weep over you. In the name of Jesus. And very, very soon I decree and declare that you will become grandparents. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let somebody shout hallelujah once again. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me just quickly pray for you that the blessings of the end of the year will locate you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God did something in my family about two weeks ago. 
uh, my sister, my younger sister, she's now 55 years old. She got married 21 years ago. And we kept on believing God for the fruit of the womb. And um, about 11 years ago, God told me to tell the two of them, both the husband and the wife, that from now on begin to address yourselves as Mama Jesu Lulua, Baba Jesu Lulua. And so they began to call you know, each other that name and everyone in the family began to address them as, you know, Mama Jesu Lulua, Baba Jesu Lulua. That was 11 years ago. So everybody in the family, when you say Mama Jesu Lulua, they know who you are talking about. 11 years ago. And it seemed as if it wasn't going to come to pass. But lo and behold, on the 13th of November, an end of the year miracle came. Jesu Lulua came. A beautiful baby girl. She was named, uh, I mean, oh, of course, she brought that one. She was named last Monday. Your pastors were there to witness the miracle working power of God. Those who have been asking, where is your God? They will see your God in action. I'm talking of a 55 year old woman 55 55 after 21 years of marriage what he says he will do he will do yes i don't know what he has told you please hold on to it even if it seems as if it's not going to come to pass hold on to it because the devil is a liar yes. God is not a man that he will lie. He has said it, he will do it. Raise your hand to him and tell him, Lord, give me the grace to hold on to that which you have promised me because I know that you are a faithful promise keeper. What you have told me, Lord, I am persuaded that it will come to pass and it will not tarry. Father, this testimony is given to the glory of your name. To let your people know that you are a faithful God. As we praise your name. Lord, I pray for everyone here today. End of, end of year miracles. Release unto them. In the name of Jesus. What you have promised them, Father, let it come to pass in their lives. Put the devil to shame in their lives. And let your name continually be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Why don't you congratulate your neighbor ahead of time? Amen. The Lord is good. As we all know, the theme for this year's conference is His mercy, your advantage. And, you know, since Wednesday, God has used His sons. I'm the only daughter. <laughs> He has used his sons to minister to us in diverse ways. I was, you know, I followed online. And we've been richly blessed. Amen. And I, I, I loved, uh, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, when Pastor Kola was blowing the shofar. <laughs> and Tutu came in and said, don't go and say, 
One pastor carried on. Oh, I was laughing. God is good. I say God is good. The blessings that God gave to you through his sons will be permanent in your lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to look at the book of Romans chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 15 and 16 from the King James Version. Romans chapter 9, 15 to 16. It says, For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Brethren, mercy is God's prerogative. Mercy is a sovereign gift from God. And the recipients of God's mercies are determined and chosen by God and God alone. Hallelujah. So it is not your will. It is not your striving. It is not your effort that will make you to obtain mercy. It is God who determines who to have mercy on and who to withdraw mercy from. God will not withdraw his mercy from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want, to, I want us to read Romans chapter 9, 10 to 16 from the Passion Translation. You say you have come again with your different versions. Yes, bear with me. Romans 9. 10 to 16 from the Passion Translation. He says, Now, this son was our ancestor, Isaac, who with his wife, Rebekah, conceived twins. And before her twin sons were born, God spoke to Rebekah and said, The oldest will serve the youngest. God spoke this word before the sons had done anything good or bad, which proves that God calls people not on the basis of their good or bad works, but according to his divine purpose. For in the words of scripture, Jacob I have chosen, but Esau I have rejected. So, what does all this mean? Are we saying that God is unfair? Of course not. He had every right to say, most, to, to say to Moses, I will be merciful to whomever I choose. And I will show compassion to whomever I wish. Again, this proves that God's choice doesn't depend on how badly someone wants it. Or tries to earn it, but it depends on God's kindness and mercy. Hallelujah. May God show you mercy. May you become God's candidate for mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon, as we conclude the 2023 God is Able Conference, the Holy Ghost is, in, is inspiring me to talk about this is my appointed time of mercy. Amen. This is my appointed time of mercy. Rome, uh, I'm going to read from Psalm 102 verse 13. Psalm 102 verse 13, I will read the New King James Version and the Passion Translation. The New King James Version says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. And then the Passion Translation puts it this way. It says, I know you are about to arise and show your tender love to Adewumi. Now is the time, Lord, for your compassion and mercy to be poured out. The appointed time has come for your prophetic promises to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. I want you to tell three people around you, tell them this is my appointed time of mercy. Now, in this scripture, the psalmist was calling upon the almighty God to arise and to show mercy to Zion because the appointed time has come for Zion to receive mercy and favor. Now, what is an appointed time? You know, time is classified into two. The first one is the general time, which we call chronos. And chronos is a Greek language and it speaks of chronological time that is measured in seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. That's the first uh, um, category of time. 
Now the second one is what we call Kairos. Kairos is the set time or the appointed time that has been scheduled by God for something to happen. Kairos is the time of divine intervention in the life of a person. It is a time that God has appointed to bring to pass an event. An event that has been scheduled in his divine diary to transform your life and to turn it around for good. I want us to look at uh, Psalm 102 verse 13 again from the Passion Translation. It says, I know you are about to arise and show your tender love to Zion. Now is the time, Kairos. For your compassion and mercy to be poured out. The appointed time has come for your prophetic promises to be fulfilled. Brethren, there is a kairos. There is an appointed time of God's mercy for individuals. Everyone has his own appointed time of divine intervention. I just mentioned one. Even though God spoke 11 years ago, but the kairos was not yet. Until the 13th of November, 2023. The appointed time differs from individuals to individuals. And we see the psalmist in this scripture calling upon the almighty God to arise and to show mercy to Zion because the appointed time of Zion has come. And from this scripture, one important thing that you need to note is that when your appointed time comes, it is the mercy of God that we activate it and bring about the desired breakthroughs. It is the mercy of God. When it is time for God to favor you, you need the mercy of God to bring it into manifestation. The fact that your appointed time has come does not mean that your breakthrough will eventually appear. It doesn't mean that it will automatically appear. At your appointed time, you still need God's mercy to bring about your breakthrough. Amen? You know, favor is like a car. And cars require something, you know, to, 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 to operate them, like fuel. I know that there are some electric cars now. So electricity is that fuel that, you know, moves it. If you have a very good car and it has no fuel, it will not be functional. Is that not so? Yes. You'll just be admiring it. That, oh, look at my car. But it won't be of any use to you. But when you fill it with the fuel and then you know, it begins to work, then it, is, it becomes a functional car. So it is with favor. Mercy is the fuel that makes favor to work. Hallelujah. What did I say? Mercy is the fuel that makes favor to work. Without God showing mercy at your appointed time, you can never experience favor and breakthrough. He said, arise and have mercy upon Zion. Because the time to favor her has come. So it is the mercy that triggers the favor. Amen? Amen. So the psalmist identified in Psalm 103, verse 13, I mean Psalm 102, verse 13, that it was the set time for Zion to be favored and that only the mercy of God can trigger that favor to be released. And so he called upon the almighty God to arise and have mercy on Zion. God will have mercy on you. Amen. Because you and I, we are the Zion of God. And it is our set time to receive favor. It's our set time to receive breakthrough. Amen. And we therefore declare today that our appointed time of mercy has come. Ah, uh -uh, you are not in agreement with me. I say our appointed time for mercy has come. Yeah. When God's mercy is in operation, favor and breakthroughs are released with ease. And life becomes pleasurable. Life becomes glorious. 
But mercy is God's prerogative. Mercy is a sovereign gift from God to an individual. It is not your effort that can make you to obtain mercy. It is God who determines who to have mercy on. I, I read it again in uh, Romans 9, 15 to 16. The New Living Translation says, For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose. And I will show compassion to anyone I choose. So it is God who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose it nor work for it. Hallelujah. Amen. And a life without God's mercy is an ordinary life. A life without God's mercy will be beset with struggles and difficulties. And it is God's mercy shown at the appointed time that makes the promises of God to be fulfilled in your life. It is not of him that will it, but of God that shows mercy. And I declare once again that this is your appointed time to receive the mercy of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, many years ago, the Holy Ghost gave me an analogy of what mercy is. He gave me an analogy of mercy. And he said, just one minute, please. He said, that mercy is like a divine seasoning. What is a seasoning? A seasoning is, you know, a condiment added to food for different purposes. It may be to enhance the flavor of that food, to bring out the taste. I can see uh, some chefs here testifying, <laughs> you know. You know, to bring out the taste so that it can be more delicious, more tasty. For example, maggi cubes, no, nutmeg, thyme, and so on and so forth. You add it to the food to enhance the flavor. Amen? Amen. A seasoning may also be added to enhance the look of the food. To make it more appealing to the eyes. For example, turmeric and curry. For instance, when you add turmeric to rice, it makes it look so yellowish and more appealing. Is that not so? So a seasoning can also be added to enhance the smell of the food. So that as soon as you come to the vicinity of where the food is being prepared, you perceive the aroma and your mouth begins to water. So, in summary, seasonings help to make food more tasty, more appealing, and more desirable. Now, just as we have physical seasoning, we also have spiritual seasoning. When God adds spiritual seasoning to your life, your life will become more enriched, Amen. more vibrant, Amen. more pleasurable, Amen. more enviable. And guess what? Mercy is the number one divine seasoning that you need in your life to make your life extraordinarily pleasant, to make your life successful, to make your life great, to make your life very interesting and enjoyable. Because some lives are just regular. And while some lives are vibrant, it is the mercy of God that makes the difference. Are you following me? Mercy comes in different packages and it can be called different names. For example, it can be called grace, it can be called pity, it can be called favor, kindness, loving kindness, compassion, and so on and so forth. But no matter what it is called, mercy can be defined in two ways. Number one, mercy means not getting from God the punishment that you deserve for your sins. That's mercy. Because we know that sin attracts judgment. Sin attracts even death. But when God shows mercy, he decides not to give you the punishment that you deserve. That's number one definition of mercy. 
Number two, mercy means obtaining from God the blessing that you don't deserve. Number one, what is number one? Not getting the punishment that you deserve. That's mercy. Then number two, obtaining from God the blessings that you don't deserve. That's mercy. For example, God just decides to single you out for blessing and favor, not because of anything that you have done, not because you qualify for it, but just because he just chooses to bless you. When God decides to help you out, when God decides to lift you up among your peers, when he decides to make you greater than them, not for any particular reason, but for his own pleasure, that is mercy. And I pray today that God will choose you as his candidate of mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, David, we all know the story of David. David was an example of a man whose life was seasoned with God's mercy. His life was seasoned so much with God's mercy that when God could have killed him for the sins that he committed, the mercy of God spared his life. And on the other hand, the life of King Saul was void of God's mercy. And as a result, he was exposed to demonic affliction and died a shameful death. David enjoyed God's mercy throughout his lifetime. And his descendants too, they became partakers of God's mercy. And I want you to listen to what God said in 2 Samuel chapter 7, 12 to 16. I'm reading the New King James Version. 2 Samuel 7, 12 to 16. It says, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will search up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chase him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established before you forever. Your throne shall be established forever. That is mercy. Your appointed time has come for God to arise and to season your own life with mercy, just like he did for David. You know, certain, certain food, I mean, certain seasoning makes food very colorful, as I said earlier, and very appealing to the eyes. Mercy is a divine seasoning that makes a life colorful. When you obtain God's mercy, your life becomes colorful, your life becomes appealing. A life that is seasoned with God's mercy will never struggle for acceptance. The mercy of God will beautify your life and make you a subject of admiration. That's what mercy does as a seasoning. And I have an example here, Esther. Let's, let, let, let me read Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2, uh, I'll read from verse 15 to 18 from the King James Version. The Bible says, now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Hagar, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. You see, Esther was an orphan. We know her story. She was an orphan that was adopted by an uncle called Mordecai. And both of them were refugees in a foreign land. In one particular year, Kairos, one particular year, something happened to Esther in the 10th month 
The tenth month is always a glorious month. Uh -huh. yes. If you are born in October, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so something happened to Esther in the tenth month, which brought about a glorious turnaround in her life. The Almighty God arose to season the life of Esther with mercy. And he created an open door into the palace for her. You know, it happened that Queen Vashti was put away by her husband, King Ahasuerus, and a replacement was sought for the king. Some virgins were gathered together to go in one by one before the king so, they, so that he could choose, you know, somebody to replace Vashti. And Esther was among the virgins that went before the king. And she was the one that God's mercy opened the door of favor to. And she became the queen. Esther was not the most beautiful. I want you to know that. She was not the most beautiful of all the virgins. But she was the one that was seasoned with divine seasoning of mercy. None of the virgins that went in before Esther was chosen because the mercy of God, you know, had not been released upon them. Amen? Amen. It is possible for someone, to, someone else to take over the position that has been reserved for a particular person. It all depends on the seasoning of mercy upon your life. Anyone whose life has been seasoned by God's mercy will always prevail. So the former queen made a big mistake. We know the story. A mistake that made her to lose the position of queenship and she became a commoner. She did not carry the seasoning of mercy. And so there was nobody there to even plead with the king. When she made that mistake, I mean, the, the chiefs, could gather together and say, ah, Kabir is a please, have mercy on her. But he didn't have the seasoning of mercy. Nobody could plead with her. Even Kabir, as he himself, could not even reason to, to think of the good times that they had before. And say, okay, let me show her mercy. Let me pardon her. Mercy did not speak for her. And she was put away. I pray for you. In the time of your need, may mercy speak for you. Yeah. Uh, your amen has a leg. Yeah. I said, may mercy speak for you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Brethren, God has a timetable for everyone. But it is possible for some people to miss their time when it comes to their turn. It's a function of mercy. In the palace of Ahasuerus, all the other virgins have been taking their turns. They have been taking their turns to appear before the king, but mercy did not open the door for them. But one day, when it came to Esther's turn, God arose and had mercy upon her. I don't know how long you have been waiting for your breakthrough, but I prophesy into your life today that mercy will make it your turn to receive your breakthrough. The mercy of God will make it your turn to enter into your door of greatness. Into your door of glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the Bible tells us in Esther chapter 2 verse 15. I'm going to read the King James Version and the message. He said, now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, had who had taken her for his daughter was come to go in into the king. She required nothing but what Hagar, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Now, the message version puts it this way. It said, when it was Esther's turn to go to the king, Esther, the daughter of Abiel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had adopted her as his daughter, she asked for nothing other than what Hagar, the king's eunuch, in charge of the harem had recommended. Then Esther, just as she was, she didn't put on makeup and uh, this and that. The guy said, said to her, just take this, take this, you know, that's all, that's all you need. 
and she, 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 she agreed. And the Bible says, Esther, just as she was, won the admiration of everyone who saw her. Brethren, God beautified Esther's life with a seasoning of mercy. And every eye that looked at her, they had no choice but to admire and to favor her. I want you to raise your hand to the Lord and say after me in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, as you seasoned Esther's life with your mercy, and she won the admiration of everyone who saw her. Today, season my life with your mercy and make my life admirable wherever I go. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Put it to your own word and pray. It was a seasoning of mercy that made Esther to be admired by everyone that saw her. Tell God to season your life with his mercy so that wherever you go, you will be admired. Wherever you go, you will be favored. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, season my life with your mercy. And let every good door that I knock henceforth be open to me effortlessly. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Tell God to season your life with mercy. That every good door that you knock from now on, they will begin to open unto you effortlessly. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Another effect of seasoning when added to food is to release the aroma of that food and to make anyone that smells the food to desire it. Amen? When the mercy of God seasons your life, it draws destiny helpers from wherever they are to locate you and to help you. And that was what the mercy of God did for Mephibosheth. How many of us know the story of Mephibosheth? How many of us know the story of Mephibosheth? Uh, not many, only pastors. God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, so let, let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1 to 11. 2 Samuel 9, 1 to 11, quickly from the, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. You can read whatever version. Just follow me. It's, the Bible says, And David said, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And of the house of Saul there was a servant whose name was Ziba. When they had called him to David, he said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, I, your servant, I am he. The, the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I will show the unfailing, unsought, unlimited mercy and kindness of God? Ziba replied, Jonathan has yet a son who is lame in his feet. And the king said, where is he? Ziba replied, he is in the house of Maka, a son of Emiel in Lodeba. Then the king, King David sent and brought him from the house of Maka, the son of Amiel at Lodeba. And Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance. David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, behold, your servant. David said to him, fear not. For I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan's, Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of your of Saul, your, your father, and you shall eat at my table always. And the cripple bowed himself and said, What is your servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's son all that belong to Saul and to all his house. And you shall till the land for him, you, your sons, and your servants. And you shall bring in the produce that your master's hair may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do according to all my lord the king command. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. 
Now, from this story, we see how the aroma of God's mercy transformed the life of Mephibosheth. He was a prince who had been confined to a life of destitution in a wilderness called Lodeba. When his appointed time came, God arose to season his life with mercy. God made David to perceive that aroma of mercy upon Mephibosheth. And the, the heart of David was stirred up to help him. God will stir somebody's heart to help you. The mercy of God made King David to remember Jonathan, his friend, the father of Mephibosheth. King David had been on the throne for several years. And he never thought about Jonathan. Until the aroma of God's mercy entered his nostrils and stirred up his heart to help the son of his friend, Mephibosheth. Jonathan was the son of King Saul. And you know about King Saul and David, how King Saul pursued David. And Jonathan died in battle along with his father Saul, the enemy of King David. Saul vigorously pursued David until God delivered David from his hands. God killed, you know, Saul in the battle. We know the story. And I want you to know that even though the household of Saul was the political enemy of David, but at the appointed time, God touched the heart of David with his mercy. And David was inspired to show kindness to the house of Saul. The Bible says, and David said, is there still anyone left in the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And when David made that inquiry, they brought to him Ziba, a servant from the house of King Saul. And Ziba told David, you know, they needed information. And when Ziba got to the presence of David, David asked a question. He asked, his, he asked that question in a different way. The king said, is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the mercy and kindness of God? You know, at first he said, I want to show kindness to him. But later he said, I want to show the mercy and kindness of God. Everybody said the mercy and kindness of God. That's what you need in your life. At the appointed time, God arose to have mercy upon the forgotten and the forsaken Mephibosheth. David had been on the throne for years. And it, had, it, not, it did not even enter his heart to show kindness to the house of Saul. But when the appointed time came, God arose to have mercy upon Mephibosheth. The mercy and the kindness of God was superimposed over David's heart. And he was moved to help, to, to help Mephibosheth. It is now your own turn. Oh, I said it is your turn. It is your turn to receive help. Your appointed time has come. Today, God is going to superimpose his mercy over the hearts of men and women, young and old, and they will help you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The divine seasoning of mercy will trigger favor to be released upon you and your household. The aroma of God's mercy will make people to help you. They will approve you. They will accept you. They will go out of their way to assist you. They will be good to you. They will be kind to you. If you are the one I'm talking to, I want you to shout a louder amen. amen. Talking about Mephibosheth, he was born a prince. But he had an accident in his childhood that made him to become lame in his feet. And the suffering and the predicament of Mephibosheth was not his own making. He was a victim of evil ancestry. A victim of what? He was a born prince, 
but his life was subject to limitations, stagnation, poverty, lack, destitution. He became an inhabitant in, 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 in Lodeba. He, he became a tenant in the house of Maka, the son of Amiel. And the meaning of Maka is battered. And Lodeba means the dry place or dry pasture. So Mephibosheth found himself in the house of battery. In the town of dryness. He was being battered by the adversity of life as a result of evil ancestry. When someone lives in a dry place, in the house of battery, then the situation is hopeless. However, everybody say however. however. In the midst of hopelessness, the mercy of God showed up for him. I don't know who you are. You might, maybe you have been crippled in one way or the other, not only in, in, the, in, the, in, in the leg, but you have, you have been crippled as a result of evil ancestry or, or, or whatever it is. In one way or the other, you might have lost hope entirely. But I have good news for you today. Your appointed time has come for the mercy of God to show up for you big time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Mephibosheth was disabled physically, emotionally, financially, socially, and even mentally. He saw himself as a dead dog. When you get home, if you don't know the story, go and read it. Familiarize yourself with the story. He saw himself as a dead dog. But the mercy of God located him and lifted him up. The mercy of God located him in his low estate. Not because of what he had done. Not because he cried to God for mercy or for help. But because in the divine diary of the almighty God, it was the set time for Mephibosheth to receive God's mercy that would change his situation. And so the mercy of God visited him at the appointed time and delivered him out of the house of battery. And I have good news for you. Today, the 26th of November, 2023, this is your own appointed time. Yeah. Whatever situation that has been battering your life, the mercy of God will deliver you from it. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. At the appointed time, Mephibosheth received the aroma of God's mercy. And the heart of David was inspired to help him. The mercy of God made David to remember the household of King Saul. And Mephibosheth was delivered from desolation and destitution. And today, the mercy of God will make you to be remembered. Amen. You will be remembered for promotion. Amen. You will be remembered for elevation. Amen. You will be remembered for upliftment. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Where they have said no to you before. The mercy of God will compel them to say yes. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. When God's mercy located Mephibosheth at the appointed time, hopelessness gave way and his hope was restored. Today, the mercy of God will bring restoration of hope to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the meaning of Mephibosheth is dispeller of shame. Dispeller of shame. To dispel means to exterminate shame. To cause shame to vanish. But Mephibosheth was living in shame and embarrassment. And that was contrary to the meaning of his name. But at the appointed time, the mercy of God changed his story. And he became a man of honor. A man that was eating at the king's table. Today your appointed time has come home. Everything that has been causing you shame, everything that has been causing you embarrassment, 
either in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your ministry, in the lives of your children, the mercy of God will exterminate it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, as we conclude this message, I want us to review the life of Mephibosheth before the mercy of the Lord arose and gave him breakthrough. I have, I have summarized it into five. Number one, Mephibosheth had ancestral problems. His grandfather, Saul, King Saul, was God's enemy. And God withdrew his mercy from Saul. And as a result, Saul's descendant became a part partakers of evil. You know, God says that he is a jealous God, that he will visit the, the sins of the fathers upon the children. If you look at uh, Exodus chapter 20, verses 5 and 6, many people are suffering and struggling today because of ancestral sins. The mercy of God removed Mephibosheth from the repercussion of the ancestral sin. And today, the mercy of the Lord will liberate you Amen. from the repercussion of ancestral sins that have been hindering your destiny fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, number two, even though Mephibosheth was born a prince, he suffered severe limitations in life as a result of lameness. Lameness plays an embargo on his greatness. And brethren, there are certain issues in our lives, placing limitation upon our lives. Today is the appointed time that the mercy of God will lift every embargo that has been upon our destiny. I say every embargo that has been placed upon your destiny shall be removed today by the mercy of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, Mephibosheth's life was full of fear and insecurity. You know, it was a normal practice for the reigning king to get rid of the family of the predecessors, especially if the predecessors were, you know, terrible and terrible enemy. So when they get to power, what do, you do, what do they do? They will make sure they destroy the family of the, the, the former king. It was a normal thing. Amen. But instead of fear, the mercy of God gave Mephibosheth favor because it was his appointed time. Instead of fearing that David was going to come after him and kill him, the mercy of God intervened for him. That mercy that delivered Mephibosheth from fear, that mercy that gave him favor, will visit you today because it is your appointed time. Tell your name, oh, this is my appointed time. Number four, even though Mephibosheth was a prince, he lived in obscurity. He was unknown. He was insignificant until the mercy of God brought him into the limelight. Today, whatever has been veiling your life, whatever has been keeping you in obscurity shall be destroyed. Amen. Every evil veil, every dark cloud, and evil covering shall be removed by the mercy of God. Amen. Why? Because it is your appointed time. Amen. I want you to tell, I want you to, to, to shout it, it is my appointed time to shine. It is my appointed time to shine. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. And lastly, even though Mephibosheth was born into a wealthy household, he had no access to his inheritance because he was confined to Lodeba. But when his appointed time came, his inheritance was restored to him by King David through the mercy of God. Today, your appointed time has come. Yeah. Every roadblock that has been placed in your path, every roadblock that is hindering your access to your inheritance shall be forcefully removed yeah. by the mercy of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pray. And I want you to please pray because every one of us need the mercy of God. We need God to season our lives with mercy. But if you are here and you are not yet born again, you need the mercy of God that brings salvation. And if you need to rededicate your life, please, you need the mercy of God also. So wherever you are, if you are not yet born again, if you have not given your life to Jesus, 
the mercy of God is available now for salvation. If you have not given your life to Jesus, can I ask you to please rise up on your feet and surrender to him because the mercy of God is flowing in this house. If you are born again, I want you to wave to Jesus. If you are in the house, you are born again. If you are born again, if you know that you are born again, I want you to wave to Jesus. As you are waving to Jesus, I want you to look to your right and to your left. Is there anyone that is not waving? Encourage that person to stand up and receive salvation. Anybody that is not waving, encourage that person. Hallelujah. If you are born again, I want you to thank him for his mercy that brought salvation to you. Thank him for the mercy of God that brought salvation to you. Go ahead and thank him before we pray. Go ahead and thank him before we pray. Thank him before we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your mercy that brought salvation to us. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Quickly, I have seven prayer points here. I hope it's not too much. It's not. Seven prayer points. Perfect number. Okay. Will you pray? Ask your neighbor, will you pray? You will pray. You have no choice. You cannot snatch the microphone from me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God will show you mercy. Amen. Psalm 102 verse 13. The Passion Translation says, I know you are about to arise and show your tender love to Zion. Now is the time. Lord, for your compassion and mercy to be poured out. The appointed time has come for your prophetic promise to be fulfilled. I want you to raise your hand to the Lord and say in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, it is my appointed time of mercy. Arise, show your tender love to me. Let your seasoning of mercy be poured upon my life today for a complete turnaround. Brother, put it to your word and pray. Ask God, ask God to release the seasoning of mercy upon you. It is the mercy of God that will grant you a turnaround. So shall it be in Jesus' name we pray. Number two, say in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, as the aroma of your seasoning of mercy... Summon David, David to help Mephibosheth. Today, let the aroma of your mercy summon my destiny helpers to locate me and to help me. Go ahead and pray. Let the aroma of your mercy Summon my destiny helpers to locate me and help me. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Number three, say in the name of Jesus. I declare today that this is my appointed time of mercy. Therefore, you ancestral powers that are hindering the manifestation of my glory. Your time is up. I command you, vacate my life in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Ancestral powers that are hindering the manifestation of God's glory in your life. Command them to vacate your life. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Say in the name of Jesus. This is my appointed time of mercy. Therefore, I command every embargo placed upon my destiny be removed and be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. 
Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, if you are here today and you know that you need the power of God to deliver you from whatever is hindering the manifestation of God's appointed time in your life, I want you to pray this prayer number five and six with fervency. I want you to say after me in the name of Jesus. It is written, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Today, I call upon you, blessed Holy Ghost, arise, let your fire scatter all the enemies of my appointed time. Go ahead and pray. Let God release his fire upon the enemies of your appointed time. All the enemies of my appointed time receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, number six, say after me in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, whatever is in me, whatever is upon me, whatever is around me, that is hindering your appointed time of mercy for my life to manifest, let your fire fall and consume it now. Go ahead and pray. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now before we take the last prayer point, the number seven prayer point, I want to talk about KFC. Kentucky Fried Chicken. KFC make fried chicken that are seasoned with 11 herbs and spices so that they become very tasty, very aromatic when you are passing by KFC store. You know, the aroma will withdraw, withdraw you. And they are also pleasant to the eye. Now, when a tray of Ordinary fried chicken is placed side by side with a tray of KFC chicken. And people are asked to make their choice. Which tray will be emptied first? KFC. And which tray? KFC. Why? Because of the seasoning. The KFC seasoning makes their chicken more desirable than ordinary fried chicken. We are going to pray. Before we pray, I formulated a song that we are going to sing before we take the last uh, prayer point. Season my life, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Season a gekin call, a corny. A cuckoo monty of we. Don't jump the gun. I said I formulated it. Were you with me when I was formulating it? You are in the spirit. Keep on flowing. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, listen to me. Season my life, oh Lord. Hallelujah, season my life, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, season my life, O oh Lord. Let your mercy speak for me. Egbo, ah ah. Let your mercy speak for me and make my life. Delightful. I want you to sing it prayerfully. It's a prayer. 
it's the Holy Spirit inspired me to sing it. Let's sing it prayerfully. And I am sure, I'm persuaded that this 2023 God is able conference, you will remember it for good. In the mighty name of Jesus. So can we sing that song? Season my life, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Season my life, oh Lord. Jesus. Oh Lord, season me and my household with your mercy and make our lives very desirable to God and to man. Let your mercy speak for us throughout our lifetime. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and talk to him. For oh God, let your mercy speak for me. Let your mercy speak for my household throughout our lifetime. Make us desirable to God and to man all the days of our life. Oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Season my life. Let's sing it one more time. Let your sing it one more time. Hallelujah. Season my life. Oh, Lord. 